What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. And I provide simple, realistic ways to achieve your financial goals in today's economy. We're going to jump straight into the topic today, how I made six figures by the age of 25. And this is a very achievable thing to do. I won't say that it's an easy or simple thing to do, but there are a few habits that I've set in place. And they're basically these little mini systems that I've set in place that have helped me become successful and achieve every single one of my goals along the way. And of course, one of my big goals from the age of like 20 was to make six figures. I was about a year away from graduating from college and I just started to think about my future and I knew that right out of college, I would make something between 50 and 70 grand. So I knew that I wanted to take it up a notch after that. The economy was a lot different back then, but to be honest, I set the goal of six figures just because it sounds good, just because everybody at that time said they wanted to make six figures. So that was when I decided I wanted to do it too, because why not? Anyways, these are the habits and routines that I've developed and set in place from my early 20s all the way till now. I'm 28 now, and that's what helped me hit the six figure mark by age 25. Let's jump straight into it. So the first one is this habit I call keeping my goals in front of me. And there's levels to goals, right? So you have goals where it's like, you know, make six figures per year, buy a house, pay off debt. And those goals are important, but they're not as important as the little mini bite-sized goals that build up to that goal. So the first step of hitting six figures, every night before I went to bed when I was in college, I would set a to-do list and really a priority list of everything I would have to do that next day. And I did this every single day, seven days a week, no breaks off doing it. And what it did was it kept my priorities in check and it made it a lot easier for me to say no or turn certain things down whether it was going out to a party, hanging out with friends, going to the movies, whatever the case may have been back in my college days, it made it very easy because I knew exactly what I had to do every single day. And sometimes I would plan out weeks in advance, but still every night before I went to bed, I would just add some things to the list because in order to do some things, you have to do other things. For example, one of my goals was to get a promotion when I was around 21, 22 years old. And I wanted to hit it by a certain time, but that goal can't be something that just sounds good. It has to be something that you can actually work towards. So what I did was I had to take, I had to make a list of what does it take to actually get a promotion? What skills are they looking for? Who do I need to talk to? Who are the people that are already in the position that I want that I can talk to and trust and listen to? And those are the types of things that I did. So those are just examples, but yes, I keep my goals in front of me. And now I don't just use my notes app anymore. Now I use this app called Three Things and it actually is a, it's basically a glorified to-do list, but it's pretty awesome because you can duplicate certain to-do items and you can have it on repeat for however much you want. It could be on repeat every day, once a week, once a month, like a custom made type of repeat thing. And that way, when I have to do certain things like take my thumbnail picture, or things that I already do to make my videos or have certain things ready for work because my occupation is manager, there's a lot of things I have to do at a lot of different times. So having a list that is pre-scheduled so I don't have to, right before I go to bed, make the to-do to list out, that makes it way, way easier. The second one is continuous learning. Sounds super simple, but it is crucial. Just always learning and always being curious. So this goes back to work and this is actually part of how I got my first promotion. And that was this. It was just being curious about how different processes worked at work. You know, I work in a manufacturing environment. It's a very high volume, fast paced type of manufacturing environment. And there's a lot of moving pieces. There's an admin side, there's a business side, there's the manufacturing production side, there's an engineering side, there's a maintenance side. There's a, there's a lot of different moving pieces and a lot of different people with different expertise. And so I just became curious and learned as much of it as I could. All the stuff may sound boring or like it wasn't fun to do, but I enjoyed myself. I had a good time doing it and I developed myself and I was becoming more and more useful by the day. And I use this within every aspect of my life. So when it came to the gym, I love lifting weights and staying in shape and things like that. So I learned more about that. I love martial arts. I learned more about that. But outside of all of that, I just wanted to demonstrate how it could be used for things that you consider to be fun. But outside of all of that, the way that it helped me get to the six figure mark is the more you learn, the more useful you become once you start to apply that knowledge. And a good example is I learned and learned and learned about personal finances. And now I have an entire channel with 
almost 300 videos of many different aspects of personal finance and each one of you can watch those to your benefit and in a lot of cases you can learn from my mistakes so i would say just be a sponge for knowledge if you're someone who is young and wants to make six figures or even if you're older and want to make six figures you have to open your mind to learn different things and you can't just be like oh well i know all that already there's always something you don't know about something i'm literally making informational videos about personal finances but i still read up on personal finance and i still see what else i can learn about personal finances because there always is you never know everything about anything and i would encourage you because most of you are watching this to see how to make six figures at like your job and things like that so i would say apply this to your job and learn absolutely as much as you can and in order to do that you have to talk to people and network with people by the way, quick shameless plug, if you do want to start your continuous learning, I do have a link in the description where you can get free weekly financial advice coming straight from me and that'll help you along your financial journey. That has absolutely nothing to do with hitting your first six figures, but I just wanted to go ahead and let you know that is available down in the description. Number three is investing in myself. I cannot stress that enough. So an obvious example of that would be me going to college and going into debt to then get a higher than average paying job straight off the bat type of thing. But it goes deeper than that. Investing in yourself is also investing time. It's not always money related. I've invested an incredible amount of time just learning as much as I could. Stuff like learning on the job, learning people skills, learning how to deal with people in general. People are about difficult. I don't know if y'all know that. People are something else. And you know, another story that actually ties in with earning, and it's not just job related, it's also in a, on an entrepreneurial level, I've also done this. I've invested thousands of dollars into my YouTube channel. And what I mean by that is camera, the lights that you see. I've bought maybe three or four YouTube courses just so I could understand how the algorithm works and, and how to make good content and how not to be camera shy and all that stuff. I put a lot of money in. I, I even put in a, almost a couple thousand dollars into a YouTube coach and that worked out very, very well as well. That's actually what made my channel start to blow up. I literally had like 600 subscribers. Then within a few months, I had like 3,000. So. Sometimes you have to take chances. Obviously I tell you to save and put that money away and things like that, but also you have to have that belief in yourself. I'm gonna take some extra money of my paycheck and put it into something that's gonna help me learn. And even if you don't have any side gigs or any entrepreneurial goals or anything like that, that's fine. You can make six figures in so many different ways. And there's a lot of different fields in which you can make six figures. Let's say you work a job where you work a lot in Excel. Well, what's wrong with taking a little extra money, let's say $100 from a paycheck and putting it into an Excel course and then learning everything you can possibly learn about Excel and then start building up your own spreadsheets and helping your company build spreadsheets for your company. Stuff like that, special projects and things can lead to promotions as well and it makes you more useful within your company. And a lot of what I say in this video, I'm not trying to be funny when I say the word useful, but really when it comes to earning potential, the more useful you are, the better it's going to be, the easier it's going to be to make that six figure mark. And with that said, number four, a little habit that I like to do, and I've had this habit since I was in college because I was absolutely terrified of the idea of going into an interview and not knowing what to say and freezing up. Not that I've ever done that, but I just had that kind of, we'll say irrational fear because it's never happened. But I'll tell you this, I've made a habit of looking at interviews online. And I'm not talking about podcasts or anything like that. I'm talking about legit job interviews where somebody's going into a field that's similar to mine. I wanna notice how they answer the question. It's not to study it, to answer it exactly how they're answering the questions, but it's to get a scope and an idea of what an acceptable answer looks like and what too short of an answer looks like and what too long of an answer looks like. And you know, stuff like that has really multiplied my confidence and success within interviews. I've straight up blown interviewers away just by doing that simple habit. And a lot of people don't even realize you can do that. Like they don't realize that there's videos all over YouTube showing you like an instruction based video on how to interview. I think it's something that everybody, I mean, everybody should do. My favorite one of these is number five. I like to do what I call racing against myself. And I do it in every aspect of my life. But when it comes to earning, for example, I'm like, cool. Like for example, when I was 22, I was like, cool, I made 82 grand this year. 
how do we get to 90 grand next year or you know 100,000 the next year things like that i ask myself these types of questions and when you ask yourself these types of questions i don't know what it is but it seems like the answer kind of just reveals itself and the answer that revealed itself to me was now this was back when i lived in north carolina by the way the, the answer basically was well you're, you're working at a job right now that is paying well but it's mainly paying well because you're working all this overtime so you need to get something that you can work maybe half as much and make the same amount that would be a win and uh that doesn't exist here because they about work everybody to death here so it made me start to look for other opportunities and the other opportunity happened to be across the country but i sure did i flew out here where i'm at now and i've made a career out of where i'm at now and it's been amazing and i've been able to build this youtube channel and i guess another thing with this video is sometimes you really just have to take chances and you can't be afraid to do so when it comes to pursuing six figures you can't play everything safe in fact playing it safe will probably have a negative impact on you making six figures and you might not see a lot of increase from year to year so i got from i went from north carolina to nevada sure did and i still say that's the best decision i've ever made to this day this one right here deserves a drum roll number six i do not care what other people think about me and that's something that really has to become abundantly clear and i will give you a little bit of a caveat that doesn't mean i don't care what my mom thinks i don't care what my dad thinks i don't care what my grandparents think i don't care what my brother and sister think i don't care what my girlfriend thinks that is not what i'm saying that is not what i'm saying at all that's the caveat when <clears throat> the people that matter to you you should care about what they think to an extent prime example when i did move across the country of course my family didn't want me to go but i wanted to go so i had to put my interest over theirs at that time and of course they supported my decision to come out here but that's what i'm saying sometimes you have to move without giving a crap about what other people think and especially people you'll never see again for example there have been times where i've been recording stuff for my youtube channel and i've been outside on a walk or something and i would just think of an idea so i would go ahead and record the video or i would record myself saying something for a video because i'd be forgetting stuff y'all i ain't gonna lie to you but if there's other people outside I can't be out here worried about, oh, this person's going to see me talk on my phone. No, no, no. I did it with confidence. Acted like I was in my own little world. And I, I still couldn't tell you to this day if anybody was looking or trying to see what I was doing because I really didn't care. When I was in college and I stayed in to study and make sure I was applying myself and outscoring everybody in my class, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't worried about people saying, ah, oh, you're no fun. You're boring, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't worried about none of that. Because at the end of the day, when I graduated, your boy was set up for success. And it takes something special for you to not care about what other people think. And that is confidence. You have to have confidence throughout all of this, throughout every single step. And I'll explain why. When it comes to keeping your goals in front of you, you have to have the confidence to believe that you'll actually achieve those goals. Because sometimes, I'm not going to lie, it does feel like it's like, man, I put a lot of pressure on myself to achieve these goals. Wow, why did I think I could do that? And then you start to doubt yourself, but that's nothing but your own voice talking. And then you're like, oh, should I even be doing this? Should I even be recording this video right now? Should I even be writing this book? Should I even be going for this promotion? And you start to talk yourself down. Don't you ever do that. I've done that. And that is, that is, that is what happens as a result of going to war with yourself. There's enough mess going on around here. The last person you should be fighting with is yourself. Second example, continuous learning. Having the confidence to approach people and having the confidence to admit that you do not know something and that you want to know more about it, that takes an extreme amount of confidence. A lot of people will not want to lay their ego to the side and just believe that they're so knowledgeable when really they're not. Example number three, investing in yourself takes some guts because you have to believe that you'll actually follow through with what you've invested in. And I can attest to that. I had the confidence when I invested in a YouTube coach and all these YouTube courses. I had confidence that I would take the information and follow through with it. And I did. When I invested in myself to go to college and get in debt, that was all me. Some of the grants and scholarships helped me pay through it. But still, the debt, the, the, the amount that was left, that was all me. And I had to believe that after college, I would be able to get a job to then afford not only my lifestyle, but also to pay off my debt. 
Number four, watching interviews on YouTube takes a few seconds and it doesn't take a lot of tenacity to do, but when it comes time for you to actually interview, when you apply what you learn from that YouTube video, that's when it's time to do it. It takes confidence to say some of the things that you would actually have to say in an interview. It takes confidence to understand when you're being asked a trick question or even just a complicated or difficult question and then understanding how to stay calm and then knocking that question out of the park. Racing against yourself, that takes confidence because you know what? That mindset in general takes confidence. How many of y'all right now or comparing yourself to someone else, comparing yourself to how much someone else is making, comparing yourself to how well somebody's in shape compared to you, or how many of y'all are comparing yourself to somebody who might have a girlfriend or boyfriend, but you don't? How many of y'all are comparing yourselves to others? I understand that's our natural inclination. We're competitive beings, but what if I told you that racing against yourself could help you surpass other people faster than if you compared yourself to them? Just a thought. And then we already talked about number six, but I'll reiterate, not caring about what people think means you're in your own world. You're you're 100% about your goals and about what you want in life. And if you're really secure in what you want and what you desire in life and your pursuit to get it and everything, then you won't care about what other people are thinking about you. You won't. But anyways, this video is not to brag or to flex, like, oh, I make six figures. Look, a lot of people make more, whatever the case is, that, that's fine. I'm just telling you, I was able to hit the six figure mark by the age of 25 and these were some of the things in my life that I've implemented that have helped me get there and I truly believe that if I wasn't doing those things I wouldn't have hit the six figure mark and my mindset and my overall maturity wouldn't have grown to the degree that it did from me doing all of these. It's truly what helped me get there. But anyway, that is the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance, personal growth, so you can control you, control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.